And who is that? And so it begins. She is girlfriend? What kind of woman? No. Must resist. No. Do not, not stalk. No Do not murder. Not. Who are you. That's my creepy Joe impression. That's all you're getting from me. I've done a couple of videos already looking at some past episodes of you. We've looked at stuff to do with psychopathy. Luring your child into your Hannibal Lecter cage, but at least there's reading materials. I even did one episode looking at this concept of fever dreams. So he's jumping between time frames now. One in front of the other between places, between different times in his life. Yeah, this isn't psychosis, even in the context of delirium. But the new series of You has just been released, so interspersed with watching the next few episodes of The Last of Us, I thought we'd also watch You. Question, do you think absinthe really does have hallucinogenic properties? If so, how do you think it works? Let me know in the comments below. Ready? Let's crack on. As a problematic man appropriating a queer poet once said, the heart wants what it wants. A nice reference to the theory that Emily Dickinson was queer. There are some amazingly talented and creative queer people, some of whom, like Emily Dickinson, have had their work potentially censored on the grounds of their sexuality. But there is still this sense of rebellious openness and truth that I just adore and really admire. Brits are the most literary people on earth. They really read here. Some people. I don't just mean by, read, cover to cover. And look at the respect. They may not own a hairbrush, but does she dog ear a page? If LA was purgatory and suburbia was hell, London, maybe when I finally got to the good place. So while on the one hand, maybe he's feeling a bit lost, particularly now that he's got nobody to rescue, because that's who he is, right? At least that's what he thinks he is. But also someone misunderstood and desperate to prove to himself and to other people that he's a good guy, despite all the, you know, murdery stuff that's plagued the last few seasons. It's quite narcissistic, though, as well as the dangers that come with going to such efforts to try and rationalise and normalise your actions. Pub time and weekends are sacred. Yes, they are. My first thought when I saw my neighbor Agreed. was, I'm in a Hugh Grant movie. Don't get me wrong, no, it's in not a posh, hill romance for me, or to be precise, South Kensington, but I can't deny the energy here is nice, quiet. Okay. South Ken! Which is good. Perfect, even. For non-Londoners, uh, South Kensington is swanky. There is no way in a million years that someone on an academic salary could afford to live in such a posh part of London without some financial help from elsewhere. <laughs> the worst bits of London are really expensive, let alone the poshest bits. I've had a lot of time to think, Marianne, walking around London. Like a poet once said, heartbreak is our greatest teacher. And if so, thank you for making me wise. Heartbreak is our greatest teacher. I think that's true. I used to think of some emotions, the ones that we like to feel as being positive emotions and others negative, like sadness and worry and fear that we'd rather not feel at all. In reality though, those so-called negative emotions are arguably just lesser appreciated emotions and emotions that are just more difficult to tolerate, but they serve an incredibly positive function about what it means to be human. It's how we learn, it's how we develop through our emotional responses to particular events. And it's only through these emotions that we truly start to appreciate those emotions that we cherish. All I can say is never again. No love. Never say never. No people. A season would be just rubbish books. if he was actually going to stick to that, wouldn't it? No love, just books. I mean, who are you really trying to convince? He knows that the temptation to develop this... Um, pathological fixation on women he perceives as vulnerable is so much that he needs to then avoid all the triggers for it. He must avoid forming any type of relationship in the first place because that first little drink is then going to spiral into 10. So it's interesting, on the one hand he knows that what's happened has been wrong and been bad, but then the whole premise of his journey throughout Europe into London has been to prove to himself and to others that that badness is not because of him, he's the good guy. And who is that? And so it begins. She is girlfriend? What kind of woman? No. Must resist. No. Do not, not stalk. Interested. No people. Do not murder. Not interested. As a man named Moody used to say, not my circus, not my monkeys. I don't want to know. 
The best way to stay out of people's business is to know what that business is. She mostly works. He mostly plays. So he's gone from resisting the urge to quite quickly giving in and then trying to convince himself that that's the right thing to do. This comes back to a concept of cognitive dissonance that I talk about loads on different videos, particularly when it comes to things like addiction. So cognitive dissonance is when your thoughts and your behaviours are really not aligning with each other. I know this thing is wrong and it's bad, yet I keep doing it anyway. And what most humans do is then they change the thought pattern to try and match and condone the behaviour. So when it comes to... Um, Addiction, for example, you might then change your thought patterns to being, I can quit any time I want. Uh, I don't use this drug or drink as much as these people do. It's really, really fine. I don't have a problem. Therefore, I can keep doing it. I don't have to do the work to change. He's done the same thing here. He's basically permitting himself to engage in the behaviour that he's got that urge to by changing his thought pattern to convince himself that it, it, it's the right thing to do. It's a good thing to do and it's a helpful thing for him to do. All of her friends, the weeks, the months, what I did for you. For you. Really? I went to every artist haunt in Paris. I visited them over and over. You can see this defense of rationalization, convincing yourself that what you're doing is good, is right, is justified, is normal, that anyone in the same position would also do this. And we then go back to that state of cognitive dissonance where the defenses resolve that conflict and that disparity between our thought pattern and our behavior. It then becomes easier to overcome that internal resistance of whether it's right or wrong morally to actually engage in that behavior. <laughs> Not subtle, but it works. But he's rescued her now, right? Are you okay? That watch. I'll take that as a yes. Is he gonna go back to the old ways of now basically labeling her as the damsel in distress that always needs rescuing and labeling himself as the heroic rescuer that then justifies more sort of stalking essentially to make sure that she's safe and I can continue rescuing her. And it's for her, obviously. It's not for him. Who's the one that really needs rescuing here? Rhetorical question, right? Quite a thing, that. Tell no one your sordid life story for 30 years, and write it down. Suddenly millions know your every shame. For what it's worth, I didn't find your book sordid. Oh. Fellow man with a childhood, then. I see. The true childhood. Pleasure to meet you, brother in arms. On the third episode of The Last of Us, I mentioned a bit about gaydar, when people are perhaps more likely to recognise those sort of social cues for shared experiences. I think it also kind of applies here that perhaps people that have been through childhood adversity are more likely to pick up on the social cues of somebody else who's also been through childhood adversity. So much of communication is non-verbal, it's based on body language, facial expressions, uh, posture, eye contact. Those shared experiences might mean those features are more outwardly identifiable to people that have had first-hand experiences of something similar. Of course, no two people's experiences are exactly the same, but there is some overlap. Maybe. <laughs> oh, no, what was that? Absent baby. The wolf uh, is going to start talking to you soon. Uh, <laughs> now, tell us, uh, why are you here? Absinthe is alcoholic, so it has the pharmacological effects of alcohol, but there's also been alleged stimulant and hallucinogenic effects from absinthe that you obviously don't find in other alcoholic beverages. However, this has not been supported by any legitimate research. Fujone is the chemical in absinthe that was labelled as having potential stimulant effects because it blocks the activity of one of our main inhibitory neurotransmitters in the brain called GABA. But Thujone is in such, such tiny quantities in absinthe that it's unlikely to do anything pharmacologically significant. One of the theories is that any apparent hallucinogenic effects in the past have likely been down to sort of dodgy additions of hallucinogenic substances to kind of compensate for poorer quality or cheaper absinthe. Also, it's anise flavoured, so it's gross, like licorice. Licorice is gross. If you like it, you're wrong. Your opinions and your taste buds are factually wrong. It's ah, gross. Not a joke, just a fact. Am I close? so you're fairly deeply damaged. Therefore, you're capable of doing real damage. It's true. I feel like I'm supposed to be defensive right now, but I'm, I'm not. Well, who would I be to judge you? <laughs> okay, so what now? 
I work in forensic psychiatry and so many of the people that I work with have experienced horrific adversity before then going on to perpetuate some sort of, 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 of crime, often a violent crime. We know there are some shared risk factors for mental illness and criminality. I also suspect that experiencing these forms of adversity can skew your perception of what is normal and what is familiar, which makes you more likely to then resort back to that behavior, even in the role of a perpetrator rather than the victim. Some interesting stuff there and some different stuff that we haven't talked about on the other videos of you. So I like that, but I'm looking forward to watching the rest of the season. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I will see you for another video very soon. Love you, bye.